Okay, uh, here we are again. It's Max and Alex. And we want to talk about the incredible failure of the American political system to not do what is the right thing for Americans. And we have some uh, horrible, horrible news in San Antonio here in the state of Texas regarding a horrible shooting that has taken place where one teacher is dead and it could be possible that 14 children are also dead. I, um, I'm at wit's end as a man of 60 years of age trying to figure out how our political system became what it is today. And I just listened to Governor Abbott of Texas say that he didn't understand what to do. That when a situation like this happens, you know, he's at a loss for words. I'm at a loss for words because you're the asshole that put the law out there that anybody could walk around like Wyatt Earp in this state. If we had a 50 state program, there might be possible that a guy that did what he did in Buffalo, what well, last week, would not be able to go to a neighboring state and purchase weapons. We have to get this thing in, under control. There are laws that are on the books that make the ATF have extreme difficulty even using computers to trace out what has happened with weapons. We have to change our whole way of thinking because what has happened here is that some of the things that the country has done in the past is coming back to haunt us here at home. We'll go into that in another video. But for right now, let's just deal with what's at the table. A thinking of a way that we could possibly have that will allow for Americans to be listened to, to think of how we could deal with this situation of proliferation of weapons and a mental health crisis. The fact that COVID is a contributing factor to this mental health cop uh, crisis and this lack of support that came from the government during COVID. All these things I think are contributing factors along with the undue influence of outside groups to our politicians i.e. the NRA, to our politicians. What do you think, Alex? Um, well, I mean, I agree 100% with everything that you have said. I also just wanted to kind of go in a little bit more on the details of the story, what happened, what took place. So what we have is a, so we have 14 kids who have, you know, got shot, uh, students that have gotten shot, one of them happened to be a teacher as well, so the number's at 15. Um, there are other people who have gotten injured as well, um, and this is actually the guy who did it, um, Salvador Ramos. Uh, he's an 18-year-old. Somehow he had a handgun. They said he also had a rifle or whatnot. They also said that he killed, or he shot anyways, his grandmother prior to this, like right before he came to the school. I was completely unaware of that. Well, yeah. So he ended up doing that as well. That's what they are saying anyways. Um, how did he get into the school? Did he just walk in there? I don't know how that all went down because I know like at like my elementary, my middle school, they locked the doors. So no one could get in unless you get buzzed in. Right. So if you're an 18 year old kid, obviously you have no business being at elementary school. You have no reason being there. Yeah, the likely scenario that I would think is, you know, just off of based on things that happened at my own job is that people breach security through an uh, area where garbage is supposed to be taken out or some loading bays or some other area that doesn't have the level of security it's supposed to have. And you think that somebody's going to walk through the front door, it may not necessarily be the case. So that would be my assumption at this point. I just, you know, my main thing is why necessarily would you go to an elementary school? I mean, what what's the reasoning behind this? I know you mentioned the one that happened up in Buffalo, 
that was obviously racially motivated. This is a Hispanic guy, so it's like, okay, you went to a school that was like some outskirt of San Antonio. What was the reasoning for that? What do you think was the reason for that anyways? I think that we can't really speculate on what the reasoning is right now. What we can do is think that there may be a mental health crisis. That's one thing. And what I really want to know is where did the weapon come from? Because a guy can fantasize all he wants about doing something horrible like this. But the access to the weapon, who owned the weapon? Was the weapon legally purchased? Was the weapon stolen? Was there a area where the weapon should have been locked up and it wasn't locked up? I think that that right now is the more important thing. And then we can find out what the reasons are on why this person did what they did. You know, um, we uh, enjoy a other podcast called uh, ASP. And in that, the guy talks about uh, that the weapons are just tools tools a force multiplier but that changes if the person's mental state is not what it's supposed to be so all these things are coalescing together personally i feel like if you are a person that pays their taxes and the government knows your social security number through you paying your taxes and knows that you the state knows that you have a, a state license to operate a vehicle you should have a state license and a federal license to have a weapon. If you do not have that, then you should not have a weapon. People who have weapons and have people who have mental issues or whatever around them, they're supposed to have a way of locking those weapons up. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with that. I think that there needs to be some kind of chipping device in the guns, anything that was, like it's leaving the plant, the manufacturing plant, yes, I do believe that there should be some kind of chip of some sort. A GPS monitor. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like it should be some kind of GPS kind of chip in there. And I feel like, I mean, you have to get your car, as you mentioned that uh, before. I mean, you got to get your car registered. You have to get all that kind of stuff. Should yeah, that I mean, be on the yearly thing? Like, you know, get your gun registered. And if it's not registered, then you get like a $1,500 fine because your gun's not registered. Why would you not want to register your gun? Right. You know, so I feel like, I mean, that that's one step. So you get at least being like, okay, well, this is, you know, this is John Doe's gun. Oh, man, now we know it's John Smith's gun. Right. You know, how did John Smith's gun get all the way over here? Right. And you start figuring out who John Smith was with, who, you know, happened to be around him. Right. Like, okay, so this guy got it. Well, how did he get it? You know, as opposed to just some random gun that just happens to, you know, randomly pop up somewhere. I agree. Know? So that's how I feel about that. Absolutely. An electronic footprint is on your phone. You have to pay your taxes. You have to pay for your stuff with your home. There's all these documents that you needed. But then the most lethal aspect of what's in Americans' life right now, you don't, you, in many states, you don't have to uh, register that weapon. You don't have to have any kind of background checks. So this has led us down this path. And it's a path that I feel like is connected to our history as a country. We dealt out a lot of blood through these years. You know, uh, we were told that there was yellow cake uranium and uh, Saddam Hussein was going to do us harm. And we found out after the fact that that wasn't the case. Meanwhile, there was like, what, 250,000 Iraqi people that were just innocent civilians that died during that war? A 20-year occupation, trillions of dollars spent. And now, as Malcolm X says, and it's very painful for me to say this, the chickens have come home to roost. We've dealt out so much death and bloodshed that here we are now having to deal with that death and bloodshed on a daily basis in this country with a lack of uh, commitment from Nancy and from Mitch McConnell and from all those bums in Washington. They got shot up at a, at a baseball game like two years ago. I don't know if you remember that. And, and they still didn't do anything. It was a Republican softball game. Uh, Steve somebody, I forgot the guy's last name. He got shot 
Uh, a number of people uh, were ducking for their lives. But when it came time to come back to the office and do something that would be helpful to the American people, once again, they chose to go with their lobbyists and to go with the big money. Until that changes, none of this is going to change. You have to start respecting people and loving American citizens as you love this country, so you say. If you love this country, you have to do something different. You can't keep doing the same thing. Alex? Well, I mean, I have nothing to say. The only thing I do wonder is this. So you have all these rich people and the millionaires and billionaires. Do you think, I mean, obviously it's pretty clear that they just don't care, you know, that they're like, okay, we'll just let you guys, you know, you know, whatever y'all do, that's, that's y'all's problem. Yeah, kill each other. You know, do you think that it's like a deliberate thing kind of like on their part where they're like you know what you know like we're, we're so rich we're having you know we're having like a game like that one movie that we saw for example where you had the rich people who are watching each other uh you know just random you know poor people like kill each other do you know as like a who can survive or whatever right do you think you're talking about some, like the purge well it wasn't the purge but it was a different kind of movie but do you think it could be something like that where they're just like we really just don't care and they just find this to be like, you know, like fun for them? Or is it like, uh, you know, I just simply just don't care what you guys do? I think it's mainly that they don't care. Uh, it's not touching their lives. Uh, I don't know if, God forbid. Like, do they was Jeff, jollies off on this kind of stuff? If it was Jeff Bezos and his, and his, and his wife, and girlfriend, whatever she is, uh, family members, and they all got shot up. Maybe his attitude would be different. Well, yeah, every uh, once it, you know, it, it hits home, then the, the the attitude of it changes. It's already hit home. It just hasn't hit your home, and now it's a wonder if for regular people like us, you know, we got to have our heads on a swivel because we don't know. I was sitting in Costco's today, and I was wondering what would I do if somebody just pulled out a weapon and started shooting. I don't have a weapon on me. You know, and even if I did, it doesn't mean I'm going to be effective with it. You know, so we're in a, in a terrible space. And if we don't do something about it and quick, it's only going to get worse than what it already is. And it doesn't seem like it could get any worse than what it is. But that also goes into that whole idea of, okay, there's a shooter. I have my weapon. He has his weapon. That person has their weapon. That person has their weapon. Let's all just start shooting. And then now you have more casualties and no one probably actually shot the shooter right. because now everyone is shooting randomly. And as you say, you, you went up in Costco yeah. and how many people were up in Costco? Yeah. It was so many people. It was hundreds there. and hundreds of people in there. Yeah. And uh, it reminds me of, uh, I got to make a movie reference here, people. Get ready for it. Predator 2. There was a scene where all these punks come onto a train and they all pull out guns. And then everyone on the train, including an old lady, pulls out a 44 Magnum and points it at him. That's where we're headed, unless we change. And this is very important. Whether it's the, the lack of health care that we have, the lack of support that we have from our government in terms of what happened with COVID, to the, to the, to the gun proliferation, when you look at the other G7 nations... This is my argument. It's not happening like that. You go to Australia, you're probably not going to get your head blown off. You go to any of the EU countries, you're probably not going to get your head blown off. England, not going to get your head blown off. And guess what? You also have a version of Medicare for all, right? You have these things in place to help people to make it through a crisis like COVID. Not in the United States, the richest country there is. How is it the richest country does the least every time? Blue hat, red hat, same shit. Alex. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, <laughs> I completely agree with that. Um, I mean, it, and also in, in the you know idea of taxes and whatnot, at least when you go to other countries, yes, your, your tax money is actually going to something worth something. You right. know, like, for example, you have, uh, you know, 
you have your, your health care, you know, that stuff is going, you have money going towards that. So if you do have a kid, if you break your leg, if you got, I don't know, some weird rash or something. Or monkey pox. Or, well, or monkey pox that are coming, and I, I still don't even know, I haven't really even looked at that. I'm like, okay, one thing at a time. Mm. <laughs> because it's like some weird little whelps or some, some weird things going on. I'm like, okay, I don't have time to look it's, at this. It's right passed now. from, the, from uh, and this might be a planet of ape line, the simian to uh, human beings. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but yeah, I mean, other places actually care and take care of their people. Yes. So they realize I, I can't just, you know, take, 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 right. and then expect our economy to be flourishing, expect right. people to want to work, right. expect this, expect that. Right. We also have people who, well, other countries as well, they don't have this crazy work week that we have. You know, right. you got the, the, rent, uh, the, the rents and the mortgages going up. But then I don't help you at all in any way, and I make it so that you guys are pretty much forced to constantly work, 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 right. work. And then I keep moving the retirement age up, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And then now, you know, you're, you're what, 67? And then it's yeah. like, okay, you still now can't, you can't You relax. still can't get any benefits. Yeah, because then you, you, you still have property taxes on your house. And you got the most people in prison out of all the G7 nations. Yeah. You, got, you got a permanent underclass. So you got Pookie and Ray Ray running around shooting like crazy. And you have most likely, my gut instinct tells me, a group of individuals that are highly organized that are making sure that Pookie and Ray Ray get these guns. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, how are you getting the drugs in the communities? How are you getting the guns in communities? And no right. one knows about how any of this stuff is getting here. Right. Um, you know, you, you're, oh, and then also the whole thing of, you know, We'll watch a, a whole news piece or whatever, and then you'll see, like, you know, Ray Ray has, like, fucking 20 charges or something like that. And then he gets released right in, like, what, three months, yeah. if that, you yeah. know? Yeah, he's got a, he's got an electric, electronic monitor on, and he's running around in the street and shooting somebody else after he already committed attempted murder. How can you attempt to murder somebody and then you're allowed back on the street again? Yeah. And and your court case has not happened. Are you fucking yeah. kidding me? Yeah. Unbelievable. Our country blows. Our leadership blows. And we have some really good people in our country. But unfortunately, they're not the ones leading our country. You know, you guys can talk about uh, Trump and blah, blah, blah. Trump is a spoiled daddy's boy that got $400 million and had five bankruptcies and any normal person that ran a business would not run a business the way Donald Trump has, all right? So the thought that he came, was gonna come into the, uh, Washington and do the right thing is a joke. And was... Conversely, you have the people that put him there, which is Mr. Barack Obama with his little smart mouth at the, at the press a dinner that pissed the man off so much that he ended up running in the first place and not doing the things that he has the intellect and understanding to do, which is to give people Medicare for all, college uh, 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 coverage and deferment, uh, not even deferment, but to cancellation. do cancellation. Thank you. You know, I mean, you guys have failed so utterly, it's beyond belief. And you got about three or four people you can point at in Washington right now that actually care about anybody. And the rest, all they do is lie through their teeth. You got Ted Cruz from this state who allow uh, Trump to call his wife fat. And all he does is phone bank for him and then turns around and tries to head for the hills when we have the worst storm ever. You got an Abbott here that let 201 Texans die in this state. And then turns around and says, shrugs his shoulder, says, I don't know what to do when he's already enacted a law from last September that says everybody can walk around like Wyatt Earp. All right? You got every type of fakeness and ridiculousness that starts directly from the fact that you have lobbyists that are uh, in the pockets of these politicians, which you should outlaw. Electoral College, you should outlaw. And now we have a great, new data point that we always knew all along. It's not new. It's only new for people who don't pay any attention that Hillary Clinton lied about 
the uh, Russian and Alpha Bank to the Trump administration. And what they were supposed to talk about was how Trump had Roger Stone and Mike Flynn over there playing uh, a footsie with the Ukrainians. And the Clintons had the Podestas over there playing footsies with the, the Clintons. And none of that's going to be reported in mainstream media.